Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to The Fish Room. My name is Travis and welcome back to another video. So today we're going to talk about how I use a calcium reactor alongside a calc reactor here on the 300 gallon reef. Now, if you're new to the channel, this is a 300 gallon display tank with two 50 gallon low boy frag tanks attached to it. Now, long story short, I grow the majority of my coral here in the main display, frag them up, put them in the low boys and sell that stuff on my website. So if you like what I do and you want to support the channel, head over to fisheffects.com uh, where I have a ton of coral as well as 3D printing and I appreciate all the support. Make sure you check the description or the comment section for discounts uh, because they change all the time. So again, appreciate the support on that. Now, let's go ahead and get on uh, to the video here. So. When it comes to supplementing calcium alkalinity to a reef tank, there are various different methods. We have two part, we have all for reef, which is basically uh, one supplement that doses both. We have a calcium reactor and calc reactor. Outside of that, I really don't use any other method. Um, and when it comes to my personal reef tank, I have used a two part uh, back on the 125, but it got to the point where I was dosing so much of this stuff that the salinity was starting to be impacted by the amount that I was dosing. I think I was going through a gallon or so every week and a half. It was pretty ridiculous. But anyways, here on the 300 gallon reef, I have decided to go with the Geo's Reef Calcium Reactor. This is the second version that I've had. Um, Geo is a sponsor of the channel. As you can see, we have the Geo Sump, and um, I love this calcium reactor. Now, heads up, uh, there will be a separate video. I'm actually going to be transitioning uh, back over to Reborn Media, hence the reason why I'm letting the media burn down uh, quite a bit here in the reactor. And uh, we got the uh, uh, remag ready to go for the media, which will be here um, in a couple days. So I'll do a separate video on how to transition media, so stay tuned and check that out. But we have our Geo's Reef Calcium Reactor, of course, our CO2 tank and our CO2 regulator, which is hooked up to the Apex and it regulates uh, the uh, on and off of the, of the reactor. Now, when it comes to the second part, uh, we have our calc reactor, which is a vast marine. At some point, I will be moving over to the Geo's Reef uh, calc reactor because I definitely want to try that out. And we are feeding that uh, fresh RODI water from uh, with our dose pump through the apex, and that dumps right here into the refugium. So uh, those are the two methods that I choose. Now, why do I use two methods? Well. If you saw the previous video, I was uh, talking about my return pump that died, and I used to have a backup one, but then I sold it, and I didn't have a backup one, and you guys saw about jerry-rigging that took place to, uh, you know, basically keep my retank alive while a new pump came in. So, it's pretty much the same concept. Now, it's not just um, having two methods just in case one might fail, but, you know, also I'm getting benefits with pH and stuff like that, and counterbalancing the, the low um, uh, pH of the calcium reactor. We can get into that in just a second, but... Long story short, I use two methods just in case one fails. That's pretty much like if the calcium reactor for whatever reason gets clogged or something happens and it just is not working well or whatever, maybe I'm out of town, I run out of CO2, who knows, I've done that a couple times. And uh, at that point, I can go over to my apex and just crank up and dial up the uh, affluent rate or flow rate of the calc reactor and that will keep the reef tank alive long enough until I get back to be able to fix whatever the issue might be. And vice versa, if the calc reactor is that there's an issue, I can go over and the apex and crank up the, or bring down the CO2 and start really cranking up the flow of, uh, of the effluent on the calcium reactor and be able to you know compensate and take care of the reef tank uh, just in case. So having two methods in place is always good, especially if you have a coral business and, or you're growing a lot of coral. It's good to have these methods in place or these backup methods because something will happen. Matter of fact, it always happens, and it always happens when you're out of town, and it always happens, uh, you know, when you least expect it. So, I mean, for example, I'm going away from Puerto Rico tomorrow, and uh, by the time you watch this video, I'm probably already going to be there choking people. But anyways, I'm going there to fight for a few days, and uh, I, I'm, even though I have a buddy here that's going to keep an eye on the reef tank for me, I still have these methods in place because last time I went away, I went to Vermont for a couple days, my CO2 tank ran out. I just I just must have missed it and in turn I went ahead and cranked up the calc reactor It took care of the retank until I got back which was just a couple days So having those two methods uh, backup system and it keeps your retank alive just in case you can't get here and take care of it now when it comes to uh, Another reason why I, per I picked these particular methods So before we get into that you don't have to go with these two these two just work well together And we'll talk about that here in a second you can go with two part and a calc reactor You can go with a calcium reactor two part I mean you can do all for one and then have two part on the side if you have enough dosing pumps You don't have to stick with just these two But the reason why I decide to use calcium reactor and the calc reactor is because 
I have a low pH down here. Um, I am using my recirculating CO2 scrubber, which does help a lot. But with the amount of flow and how low the pH is in the calcium reactor to basically compensate for all the growth that's going on in this tank, which, by the way, you will see a video on this real soon. I'm doing a, I'm doing a uh, tank cleaning and cutting, coral cutting. This tank is growing ridiculously quick. And um, so with the amount of, of fluid that's coming through, the pH stays relatively low in this tank. So to counterbalance that, using the calc reactor helps elevate that pH. I, uh, I Not only do I dump the effluent rate from the uh, calcium reactor into the refugium, but I also dump the um, effluent from the calc reactor to the refugium. So everything kind of comes together. Um, the chato helps elevate the pH, and then we add the CO2 scrubber on top of it. My pH is staying about 8.1. Pretty happy with that. It stays relatively consistent. Um, if I keep my skimmer off for a couple days, sometimes it pisses off the system. But outside of that, having these two methods together, they balance each other out, uh, not only taking care of the calcium, alkalinity, and magnesium, but they also help elevate the pH, which is good for coral growth. So uh, that's just kind of my setup. I really, uh, I mean, I've been using this method for what, since I pretty much started the reef tank. I think, I think maybe a year after I officially set this up, I added the calc reactor. I'll have to double check through the videos, but this has been my method and it works really, really well. Um, I go through a, quite a bit of calc. I am dosing about 11,000 milliliters per day currently. Um, I have to double check the flow on the calcium reactor, but with the media being pretty much like starting to deplete, I usually don't let it go down that far, but with it coming down that far, I have to compensate with the calc reactor. So. Once we get the new media, we'll balance things back up, balance things out, and go from there. Now, if you're looking to add a system, so let's just say um, you have a calcium reactor and you wanna add your calc reactor. Now, one thing I recommend you do is uh, leave your calcium reactor the same. Um, let the alkalinity come down to, you know, most people like to stay around nine-ish, which, uh, you know, and most people like to, I'd be lucky if I get there, but <laughs> let, your cal let your alkalinity come down to like seven, five, eight, stay there. And then when you add your, cal uh, your calc reactor, go very, very slow, let it dose. Uh, for me, at mine dose doses throughout the 24 hour period. You can dose it at night if you want to help the pH elevation a little bit more. But for me, I let it dose completely, uh, you know, on its own throughout 24 hours. And what you're going to do is you're just going to add it go really, really slow, and over the next couple weeks, just start increasing the effluent rate. Now, make sure you are keeping an eye on your ATO because if it gets too low, you're, gonna, you're not gonna be pumping water through, so just keep an eye on that. So, just add it, go very, very slow, slowly increase it, watch the alkalinity um, increase without making any adjustments on your calcium reactor, and then just go from there. It's a very simple process, and um, once it's dialed in, you really just have to kind of just top it off. That's it. Make sure you're always, uh, you always have ATO water, especially if you're going away. Make sure you fill up your ATO and you have enough to compensate. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. So hopefully this will address uh, some of the questions that you guys are um, asking regarding the calcium reactor and the calc. If you have any more, feel free to put that stuff in the comment section. I'll take care of it. If you want a more in-depth video of like how much I dose specifically or, or anything like that, let me know. I'll, I will uh, go ahead and make that for you guys and help you out. And uh, with that, yeah, if you want to support the channel, head over to fishofhex.com. We've always got sales going on, and I appreciate the support. All right? See you. Peace.